How long has it been in the bag? So uh, about three days after it became um, conforming. Okay. What was that? October 6th or something? Sixth or eighth. Yeah. That sounds right. So I put, right. It, I put it in the day that it was uh, able to be conforming. So it happened to be uh, overseas in Malaysia. Oh, and I nice. used it for my first event. And I think I finished uh, May 20 something over there and 14th nice. in, um, in Korea. So I had two great finishes the first two weeks with it. So you did you did some testing with Jeff down at the players, right? Or down at TPC, I should say. Yeah, it was it was kind of, uh, it was during the fall series and the end of the uh, tour championship. So just kind of, had a time to reset and kind of think about what I need to do better. And driving was the, my best category last year. So kind of went down there thinking I'm good with what I have. I like everything. And and I was beyond surprised when um, I put this in the bag. It was faster, straighter, more forgiving. It was, it was the easiest change I've ever made in clubs uh, switch mm -hmm. on the one club I never thought I would switch. So that's pretty, it's saying a lot. And um, I've used it ever since and haven't even considered taking it out. That's awesome. I mean, as someone who doesn't historically like to change, so you went in almost skeptical, right? Yeah, I went in just doing Cookie a favor to walk down and hit his driver for him and give him some numbers and leave, and then I left with a new driver. So, <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you have any moments where you were like, yeah, maybe maybe this was just on the range and it wasn't going to work? Or um, well, I, I tested it on on the Mizuno track man and, and and with all their equipment and everything, and it was better. Then I brought it here and did some independent testing on it, and it was better that way too. So, it was a it was the easiest no-brainer switch I've ever made. And how long had you had your other driver in the bag? Um, probably a year and a half to two years, and I'd okay. cracked a bunch of heads, and I just kept going back to the same one and the same one, and it was um, it was, it was was great. I, I used it for, it got me on the PGA Tour and had a great year, first year on tour with it, but um, hopefully this one will have an even better ones. Absolutely. Let's hit a couple. So driving's always been one of your strong suits, right? It, it has been, and I've uh, been fortunate to uh, be blessed with some good club head speed. And as long as I can keep it in the fairway, then I'm using it to my <laughs> right. my advantage. And you know, I've I've that's what I've always worked on is keeping the spin down and um, trying to work it left to right. A lot of times, uh, a lot of new technology is based for hitting it high in a draw, right. where I kind of hit down on it and like to see it fade. So I've always had some difficulties in terms of finding a driver that fit my game. But with these new, there's two new drivers that came out, and one's more of fade bias and draw bias, in my opinion. Right. And what I use, and this driver was helped me do that without compromising the technology in the head. It's, it's funny you say you. You want to keep your spin down, but you also want to you hit down and you hit a cut. Both things that increase spin. Right. I think it's just the speed at which I hit it adds yeah. so much spin. Right. Um, I mean, I use a golf ball that has, has very little spin. I use a shaft that has very little spin and a head that has a lot of uh, face weight in it. Just because of the speed that I'm hitting the ball, if it has too much spin, it starts rising this way. Right. And I can always play a flat cut and, and be fine. If it's the fairways are firm, it's going to go a while. And if right. the fairways are or uh, wet, then everybody's hitting it shorter. So right. it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Right. Cool. It's got some speed. That was, uh, that was a little bit more solid than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel you are distance wise, just compared to the tour? Or do you feel like you're you're typically the long guy in your group, or? Um, I, typically, I would say yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, it's it's if you know I'm probably one of the longer players. Um, I, I do. I'm I'm not optimal compared to what a track man would tell you to do. I probably could gain some distance if I hit up on it and right. you know, hit a hit a straighter ball flight. But I don't hit it in the fairway as much when I do that, mm -hmm. and so I usually. I, I hit it far enough that I can sacrifice some distance for some accuracy and right. it not affect my game. And so, you know, if I need to put a little extra on something for a carry and there's a wide fairway, I'll tr sometimes try to, to, you know, manipulate a little yeah. bit. But that's, I mean, that's very rare. What happens when you hit up on it? Is it? Is it? it, it well, the, the driver that I have and it's made for me, 
it doesn't really turn over as much. Yeah. I mean, I really have to work on it to get it turned over and stay in the air just because it doesn't have enough spin to do that. Right. So I'll really, it'll have to be a really warm day. I'll right. heat up a little bit higher, have a little extra in that backswing. Yeah. But, um, we can we can see if we can do one today. It might it's a little a little chilly, but we, we might be able to pull one out of here. Ooh, see that's why I hit down on it into the left, right there. And that's the shot you just want to avoid. And Absolutely. Typically, yeah. If I can keep that left side of the fairway out of right out of it, then I'm in I'm in good shape. And and um, hitting that cut. And starting it on the left and, and, and bringing it back is just is usually my go-to shot. I, mm -hmm. I can hit it anywhere. And, and honestly, there's been times where it's it might be a driver hole, but there's some trees or something on the left. I'll just take three wood out and just hit right. it up there and get in the fairway because that happens so rare these days that right. that I just stick with my shot and just go with it. Yeah. It's a cold day. It's a cold day, it's and cold it's still 178. <laughs> it's a cold day, and he hasn't hit any since uh, RSM. Right. So a month and a half ago. Yeah. But anyway, we're. Uh, I would say I would say my tournament speed, especially yeah. in warm weather, is is always faster than the range speed, just because of adrenaline and yeah and and things like that. And your you know your body's been moving all day, so that's 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 tough sometimes when you fit yourself on the range. That your tournament swing might be a little bit different, and for amateurs, it you know it's the same. It might be slower on the course or faster on the range. It's 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 very different. So the key to fitting a driver is is find something that works on the range, but then you got to take it on the course. You got to put it in play. And that's what you said. What you did. Right. Then, exactly. I, I took it. I've tested it. All the numbers were better on the range, but I brought it home, played with it a bunch on the golf course, and was just seeing the same results. So mm -hmm. when you do that, it's fine. And then I put it in tournament, and it was even better because once I started swinging even faster and faster, this this head was able to control it, and then just kept it in the fairway, and it was awesome. Have you had it where you test something and hey, this is a great range club, and then you get out, and it's just something's not right on the course? Yeah, sometimes when you have a range, you have the free uh, free will of swinging and not really worrying about where it's going, and so a driver can be less forgiving on the range, and then you take it on the golf course, and you miss one or two, and then it's very you know it's amplified. Right. So this club it was is very very forgiving. So when I didn't hit it well on the golf course it was still in the fairway and that was when I was really knew it was a good club. How much are you influenced by what other guys are playing out there? I mean, um, I mean like nowadays there's so many good clubs out there that it's not as big of a deal but um, if you see a trend where multiple guys that don't have club contracts start gravitating to one specific club that's right. when you know because those guys aren't paid necessarily to play that club and they're all using the same thing that's when you know it might be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and you know, fortunately, I, I had an open, open-ended a lot of them, my clubs, and this was the absolute best on the market at the time. And well, it's funny. I feel like you've been one who kind of started one of these trends on tour right now, where <laughs> you know, it's, you you took a chance on it, and and all of a sudden it feels like there's momentum gaining on tour with this club. Exactly, and and it's a lot. Of, like I said, a lot of guys that don't have driver contracts coming up, a lot of them are starting to use this club because they see what I see, that it's it's great and it's, it's got a lot of speed and it's got a lot of forgiveness. So, um, I mean, I'm more than pleased and I think a lot of guys out there are as well. That's great. Really good numbers. That's as good as I got on a day like today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, had you tried Mizuno drivers in the past? Um, Yes, I, I remember the last one that you had out was it was the numbers were pretty good on it. Um, the look of it wasn't nearly as good as this one. This is one of the drivers that when you look at it before you even hit it, you you like it and you feel like you you got a good chance. And that's a big thing with guys that if they don't like the way you it looks right. when you look down at it, it, it's not a good start. Right. And that's that's a tough tough battle to fight because I mean you gotta look at it every time and be confident in it and if and but this one thank goodness just looks incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean I like the shape of it, I like the color of it especially. And um, so that's step number one. So when you put it down and you like the way it looks, you got a good start. Then if it performs well, it's a no brainer. Right.
did you hit the, this is the standard ST190, and then we also have the G with the movable weights. Did you try both of those? I did. I like the way, uh, is it the G? Is that the other? I like the way the G, the sound. It had a great sound mm -hmm. and a great look. Um, but I wasn't able to shape the shot that I mm. like to normally hit as well as right. this one. Um, it, it, everything about it was great other than, the, if I was a draw player, yep. and you know you can move those weights exactly where you needed to, Probably make Kyle's job easier than having to put a bunch of glue in here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was great. If I mean, if I could carry two drivers, it'd be great. I'd just use that hole in the right, right. The left hole. So. so if you felt like this is the fade one and that's the draw one. Well, for me personally, I'm yeah. not saying that's you know I don't want to put that stereotype on the on everyone. Right. But for me and the, my shaft characteristics and my weight characteristics, that's just kind of how it ended up. Cool. Can we hit another one? Yeah. 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 Great ball there. It's such a flat trajectory for such a flat, uh, for a fast ball speed. Typically, you, you're used to seeing that type of ball speed get way up here. It's yeah. A little higher. Yeah, I mean, I might be a smidge higher than normal. I mean, mm -hmm. just with the just the cold and the, all the layers on it, you can't get quite around it, which is so tough for us when you you have to go to different environments. I mean, we went from Malaysia this year, which was 100 degrees <laughs> right. and humid, and where the ball's going forever. To the very next week, we go to Korea and. I mean, I had hand warmers and four layers on. I mean, my entire uh, <coughs> clubs changed everything. Like my, my distances were changing, my trajectories were changing. And so that's what's, that's what's fun about, you know, when you travel so much and play in different environments and different grasses that you really have the ability to, you know, to change and you have to figure it out. And Do you try to put math to it? Like, do you try to get like on track man? I don't, the range? I, yeah. I don't. I, I mean, I think guys like us have played enough that you should know that and yeah. if not and you're relying on the machine to tell you what to do then, right <laughs> i mean good luck i mean i know people do it and so yeah. i'm not saying it's wrong right but i mean i've i've played enough in cold weather and hot weather that i can kind of tell how far the ball's going do you make any adjustments ever to your clubs between between setups um, between tournaments no um i i don't i mean i could i can probably count on one hand the amount of times i've done it since i've turned pro and I just think if you have a good club, that it yep. should work in everything. It might not be great in one week, right. but if you start changing every week, you could just get lost because every grass is different, right. every weather is different, and you know it might rain one day and it might not the next, and then all of a sudden you're trying to switch and you're carrying two sets of clubs with you all the time. Right. I just think that you're, you're, it's not as easy. So I mean, I've worked with Kyle and Cookie on getting my set exactly how we need it. We got all our numbers on a sheet of paper and in a computer and. About once a month, I would say. Check off the lines. That's yep. it. Yeah. We, the grips on occasionally. Yeah. The, the nice thing, it sounds like you just try to minimize variables out there. Exactly. Like, yeah, there's I know enough already. I mean, right. why add more? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's been uh, it's been very helpful. They have the truck out there, and we can walk in, and, and they have the machine. And, I mean, I know they calibrated about once a year, so it makes everything very, very simple. We, when only time I change my clubs is when I change them back to what they were supposed to be. Right. So when you like when you set up a driver, do you know in one swing, hey, this is gonna work, this is not gonna work? Two or, swings. Two swings. Because I might hit a, my first swing might not be my best right. swing, um, which oftentimes is good because if you don't make your best swing and the ball goes in the fairway, that's great. And yeah. then you make your next one, which is good, and it goes in the fairway, then you know. Right. So if you make a good swing, a first good swing, and it's not, it doesn't feel right. Then, it's out. Then it's yeah, I might give it another <laughs> shot. <but laughs> right. Yeah, I'm already thinking in my head it's not the one. Right. So. No, that's really cool. Just hit, let's hit one more yep. and then. Yep, that's all you got. Anyway. Perfect. Perfect. Glad I said one more, well, not two more. Oh, this one might. This one's hot, Cookie. Had it in there, nice. <laughs> your pants in there, getting it warm. <laughs> there we go. That's got some height on it. Yeah, it's great numbers. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> 